Welcome to another how-to video from Bugspray.com. In this video, I'm going to highlight how to treat a window. In this case, we're looking at a, basically two windows. So for the point of this video, we're just going to focus on one side. We're going to focus on this half. There is a bed that's kind of in the way and treating the other half right now would be redundant because it's exactly the same as this window. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have full access to the window. And as you can see, I've already moved away one of the drapes. That drapery would have been an issue because it's obstructing our ability to inspect this side of the window. And that brings me to the point that when we're dealing with windows, you want to look at them as three-dimensional. In other words, you have the inside area, you have the window itself, and then you have the outside area, the main point of entry. Something to consider here is that windows allow both crawling pests and flying pests to enter the home. And anybody who keeps a window open with no screen is obviously vulnerable to a plethora of flying insects. Most windows are going to be key points for crawling insects, things like springtails, sausages, roaches, ants. I mean, pretty much anything that crawls can get into a window and then into the house. The big problem with windows is that they have spaces which a lot of insects really, really like. And we're talking about invasive Asian ladybugs, stink bugs. These are pests that overwinter and they like tight spaces to keep themselves occupied or comfortable during the winter months. They don't necessarily want to come inside, but ultimately they do if they can find these spaces around a window or a door or other entry point. So if you have any of these pests active inside and you're unsure about where they might be entering, windows are almost always going to be something that should be at the top of the list. And this is particularly true if you're experiencing insects inside rooms bedrooms, uh, any, any room that has windows. So as I said before, the first thing you want to do is take a look at the inside of a window and see if we have any areas that could warrant a treatment. Now when we're talking about treatment, in this case we're going to be using the FSMP and for the point of this video, I'm not going to actually be spraying it, but really just pointing out where we would want to be spraying it if we had springtails, if we had uh, sausages. If we had mites, clover mites love coming in around windows and they're just regular, it's just so many voids and so many places that they can come through that windows really have to be focused on. Now at first glance this area, or I should say the inside of the window, appears to be nice and tight and the higher you go you can see that the plantation shutter has been nicely mounted to the window frame. So there is a pretty good caulk here, and the same goes for the molding on the wall. But when you get to the bottom of the window, that's where all the vulnerable areas start to show themselves. And in this case, obviously we have some dust, and we have what looks to be maybe some insect droppings. But more importantly, we have a little gap. And that little crack there would be a key entry point, and certainly one that we would want to focus our FSMP. So we would get that into the crack, and we would hit this a good three, four, five seconds, making sure that that whole area gets saturated. The obvious reasons caulking and painting over this is something that probably needs to be done. It's not an extremely big crack. It's not leaking water, but it is a vulnerable area. And that crack, as small as it is, that's where these insects want to live. When we talk about springtail pockets, it's almost always cracks like this where they're going to congregate. And then from there, they're going to forage two, three, four feet in every direction. And then you start seeing them down here. And you're thinking, well, they must be in this baseboard down here. And yes, you should be treating that. The point of, that, of this video is not to tell you about treating baseboards. It's to focus on the window. 
because at the end of the day, it's more likely the insects came from the window and ended up down here at the baseboard. They didn't come from the baseboard. There are exceptions to that, like a slab home. But in this case, we're at the second level of a house that has had a problem with insects in this particular window. And as we get the window open, you'll begin to understand why. As far as the bottom side of the window, you want to get down nice and low, and then you'll want to get your light up, make sure that that area is properly sealed, that there's no place, cracks, that any insects can be entering. So, quick summary is that on this side, we're looking at this as the main point of entry, and it happens to be in a corner, and corners of windows are super vulnerable. And that's because moisture that comes down a window, to give you an idea how a window works, outside on the exterior siding, underneath whatever the siding might be, say masonite or brick or stucco, whenever a window is inserted, there's flashing that's put over the top of the window. And that flashing is designed to divert the water. So if any water is coming down, it's going to come down on the sides of the window. And ultimately, it's supposed to be channeled back to some flashing and off of the roof. In some cases, down to the ground. It just depends on the outside structure. In this case, there's a roof right outside here. So the window is basically deflecting the water onto the roof and then off the roof. However, if flashing is defective, if there's little gaps in the flashing, you can oftentimes have moisture getting into this void. And then of course, insects will take advantage of that space. But for all practical purposes, this is a pretty tight window. Uh, ideally, what we would also want to do is get up on top of the bed and give it a look from above, just to make sure that there's nothing going on up here. And as you can see, it's nice and dry. So dry, that we literally have dust that has undoubtedly occurred from when the installation occurred or possibly when this window, I'm sorry, when the drapery rack was installed because this is an area that would normally not be vacuumed or anything. There's no cracks here. There's no moisture leaks. You wouldn't need to worry about this area. The actual two windows are separated by the plantation shutters. And if you look carefully, you can see that there is a gap here. So this crack, 100%, is a key area for where insects would want to be nesting. I'm looking now, I can see inside, and I don't see any, but this house has had an issue with stink bugs, and this would be the point, one of the points that I would be focused on when I'm on the inside dimension of the house. So keep that in mind. The straw from the FSMP would fit perfectly in there, and this would be very easy. If I was treating this, this crack, it would be as simple as a tss, right down to there. And since I'm going to have this window open, and since I'm in an open room, I wouldn't even be wearing a respirator. I would be wearing, obviously, some surgical or rubber gloves. But the window is going to be open, so there's good ventilation here. Which leads us to the next section of the treatment. And this is always the money section. So first, you want to get your bottom part of the window open and give it a look over. And we immediately no start to notice the cracks and gaps where insects can be infiltrating. If you look here, you can see... A lot of nice gaps in the window frame. So the runner here, and this is where the window sits and tracks, is a piece that fits on the actual outside window frame. And over time, this will separate and there'll be gaps formed. I'm trying to get my flashlight just right. It's hard to, that kind of shows it. So hopefully you can see that. There's some gaps down here at the bottom where the runner meets the window sill. But these are all key areas. On the outside of the window, there's a type of screen that was added. And that frame has caused a gap 
which insects would love to infiltrate. The runner itself for the screen is also a point that they would love to infiltrate. And then we go back to all these little gaps, all places where springtails, sausages, Asian ladybugs, all like to get in there. So we take a look at the bottom of the window, but we don't want to treat here first. And the reason why is because anything that you do above naturally will leak down. So it's always best to start up high. And then once you do your up high application, you can roll the window back up and see just how far the treatment from above went. And that's kind of important. So in this case, if we pull this window down, what you see is the innards of the spring mechanism for the window. This would be a vital area. It's a big space. It's a flexible runner. The spring has a lot of open area for insects. And that little net that I was telling you about, the uh, what we call the, the screening, this device, it is a just a haven for many insects to want to get up into. And this space up here is where the bugs are going to want to be. So when it's up, there is no clear look to any kind of a space or anything interesting. But if you push on this frame, you can begin to see the space. And then when you roll it down, you can clearly see the space. It's right up here. So we would want to take the FSMP and just, just across here. And when you do that, what's probably going to happen is that you're going to find it coming out here. But that's fine. Now you know you've got this area treated. The actual uh, window runner needs to be injected. And using the FSMP, you would want to spray it all down here like tss. And then when we look over here, we have some little gaps. Tss. That would be a place for sure. This gap, tss. this would be a place for sure that you have to treat. Tss. 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 I would want to treat this frame real good. Tss. And then on the other side, same thing. Notice up here, another gap. There's a little shim. This needs to be injected. Just a couple of seconds will do the job. And then here on the shutter itself, another gap. Here we have the gap. So, as you can see, there's lots of gaps, all of which can be used by insects. The runner itself is actually hollow. Most people don't realize this, but the runner usually is flexible. So if you can push on your runner and you can get this to move, you pay attention, you can see this one is moving, but this one is not. And that's because there's a gap here. So ideally, what you would want to do, and it's going to be very hard for me to actually demonstrate, but I would use one hand to push this, and then I would use the other hand to get the straw here, and I would inject it directly into that crack. It's a very, very subtle crack. But I guarantee you, springtails, sausages, book lice, they're small, and they thrive in that environment. And this is also, remember, right where the flashing comes around. And once it comes around and gets into this void, it can then harbor a plethora of flying insects because there's enough moisture for things like drain flies, gnats, forage flies, all of which can thrive. So make sure you get that. If you have a collapsing runner, make sure you get that gap open and injected really well because that's a classic place and you got to do that on both sides. So after you get both sides treated. We now have 
pretty much got this window except for one space and that's the space between the window and the actual runner so before you roll the window back up it's always good to just lightly spray the outside so just just like that and now we can go ahead and push the window back up and now there's a treatment that's inside here however I would still take the straw and give it a tss, right down. And on this side, it's a little tighter fit, but I would do the same thing. Tss. Why? Because insects can be in there. And you think because you're moving the window that you're killing them. But that's not really the case. There's the space is way bigger than you can imagine. You can kind of see it here. You know, we can see it on this side better. I mean, that gap is, is big. I could almost fit the straw in there. So insects thrive in there, particularly the small ones. Again, like the springtails and sausages and book lice. Clover mites, they love these areas. And that's because this runner, it just harbors all kinds of moisture behind it. And algae, remember, most of these insects thrive on mold and algae. So anything that is fueled and needs water is going to thrive behind that. Interestingly enough, in case you didn't notice, this is actually a very dead stink bug. It's lost its shape. It's kind of old. But this is what one of the problems were when we were first addressing this window. It's long since been uh, fixed, but finding some dead insects, classic sign of a problematic area. Now, before we move on it's important to realize this is not an area to worry about in this case because this is just a pane that you can take off and all you'll have left is solid glass so there's nothing that you can treat here the pane itself should be removed because insects could be behind it you can't do that with the window in an open position but what you would want to do is take this off and then give it an inspection on the back side, make sure that there's nothing crawling around. I would probably take the FSMP and spray it, and I say that because if you look there, you can see there's a couple of dead or remnants of Asian ladybugs. They're smashed on the glass. So to make sure that we don't have a problem again, I would lightly mist the back of this. And in doing so, you've put in place a product that's gonna last pretty much indefinitely in this condition, certainly six months to a year, and you won't have to worry about insects moving into that spot. So at this point, we have the top half of the window treated, and now we can deal with the bottom half. So when we're going to the bottom, what we wanna do is get the window open, and we wanna inspect to see how much of the treatment we did above has come down, or if any at all has come down. So what we're doing here is looking to see, did our treatment penetrate far enough that we use so much that it's leaking out? And if it did, that's great. If it didn't, that means that this is certainly a super vulnerable area. Now, the first thing that jumps out at me as I look at this is obviously there's a little bit of green. So we know we have some moss growing here. And obviously it's a little dirt perfectly normal but going back to this gap that I showed you at the beginning of the video this would be a key spot for the FSMP so you would want to get your straw right in here and you want to saturate that but we would want to do that up the entire runner we would of course getting ahead of myself we would want to start up here and we would want to do that same thing I was telling you about before where you push the the runner away and you get the straw in here into the gap and by doing so you're filling that void I would do that from here all the way down and then of course I would once again hit this little gap I'd hit underneath here the frame for that screen that pulls down this is a vital area if you look here you can see there's a big gap I mean I'm looking I'm almost shocked that we ha don't have insects in here 
this was treated in the fall and that was a few months ago when they were having a problem and it appears that we got ahead of it and it stayed so the treatment lasted so it did its job and obviously we don't have anything that I can see ongoing but we do have these gaps and they would all need to be sprayed and we do have them here so focus on every section like every single gap look at it and some of these will have the spacing like the runners from the permanent part so you want to push them and try to get the spray into and behind it the other ones that are obviously pretty solid there's not a lot of benefit of spraying that they will be sprayed as we're finishing and we close the window but that's just a topical treatment to ensure that insects aren't living underneath the windowsill because up here there's a rubber seal and this is a classic place where insects get and you can see why it rots it harbors moisture and that's because it's sitting down here so as the rain comes and hits the window and falls here, it helps to deteriorate the seal. And insects get in there. This rubber seal, classic place for insects to be living. So this would need to be treated with the FSMP big time, all the way across. You can go ahead and pull that down and inject it and get that nice and treated. So now that we have the bottom half of the window treated we can now move to phase three which is the outside area of the window oh look at that another stink bug let's see if she's moving nope that's a dead one so amazingly and here's another dead one amazingly we did have a lot of problems out of here but it appears we've done a pretty good job of knocking them out because we're only finding dead bugs I and mean, we're talking hundreds that were out here when we had a treat in the fall. So let's get out on the window and see what we can do out here. All right, so now we're on the outside of the window. And this is what I call the third stage or the third dimension of the window. And out here you can see the caulking. And for the most part, it's in really good shape. However, there are a couple of spots that I would be concerned about. What's interesting about this is that if you were at the ground and you were spraying, say, the Max Thor, you would think that it would get in there and take care of it. And if you hit it at the right angle, if you came in from this angle, it would. Max Thor is very penetrating. But if you, say, sprayed above it and it all dribbled down, it would not get in those gaps well enough. Insects can get in there and then migrate up to the sealed sections and the spray will never go up the spray will always come down now if there was a big hole up here and you got some in it can very well leak all the way down and serve its purpose but for all practical measures the proper thing to do is to just spray on top of everything and then focus a little bit on any gap that you can find for me we go back to this frame on this screen now, as you can see, it's obviously a little dirty. The toll of the winter leaves uh, and all of the organic degradation that happens to the leaves has led to some mold buildup. We have a little bit of, of algae, so a pressure washing is needed. I mean, for the most part, this stuff will just come right off with a little bit of pressure from any kind of wash, whether it's a garden hose or a damp sponge. The point is, this is food for mites. We're talking spider mites, clover mites. It's food for springtails, sosids, and they will be coming out big time in a very short period of of time as we approach spring it's approximately 60 degrees insects in the spring start to get active 55 60 degrees and it's not uncommon for them to come out in the middle of the winter because 
you can have spikes, particularly here in Georgia. And when you get those spikes, the insects get confused. They don't know it's officially not spring, but they'll come out. So going back to the outside area, we want to look all the way around, all nice and tight, so we don't have to worry about that. But this frame, huge problem. And you can see here, big gap here. So we want to get our spray in here. It's, it's all the way down. It's, massive problem for me this particular device is a huge issue and why this window has been the only problematic window uh, on the side of the house it just has so many voids that are introduced because the window has this screen and the extra mounting points the other areas that you can't forget, in this case, would be the falsetto shutter. So this outside shutter, which is a fake shutter, still has hinges, and they could be behind it, although that's pretty tight. I would still spray, just so it's tss, 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 the joint tss, tss, here. Tss, tss. And I would definitely be concerned about the backspace. It's hard to see. I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to pick it up, but there is a massive gap back here. So you would wanna get your straw behind here and just saturate this entire area from top to bottom. And then take the extra time to do the same thing if you can reach it on the other side. So this whole area would need to be sprayed. If you're spraying these areas and you're finding dead bugs underneath, that is a huge, huge plus. That means you're getting the product where it needs to be, and it means that you've identified a key problematic area. If we take this a step further, this is really bad. All this organic matter sitting here is just decaying, and all this organic decay is what the insects need to live. So, it wouldn't surprise me if there were springtails living right now, or active I should say, even though it's the middle of winter, because the temperature is so warm. And there you go, what is this right here? What do we got? We got a little something there. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. Looks like it's an ant. Not a surprise. And it doesn't mean that there's an ant colony here. It's not likely. However, these leaves, because they get blown around, will have a range of insects that they're carrying. Oak itch mites, ants, aphids, white flies, all kinds of other flies. Again, the Asian ladybugs, stink bugs. And when the leaves get accumulating on the structure, they're naturally foraging to find a new home. And that's when they go into the cracks and crevices that they can find. So going back to the window, because the point of this video was not to talk about gutters. It was to talk about windows. Once we get down low, we can see that if our treatment above drained down, and if there's any puddling down here, if, if we find that, great. If not, it doesn't matter. You still got to treat areas like this gap. Fill it. Just tss, let it take as much as it can take. Here's another space. Definitely nice gap here. I mean, I can watch what happens. You hear that? I'm I'm actually spraying, and you don't see anything coming out. That's a big gap right here, and insects are going in. This needs to be caulked. This is a huge issue. Water is going to get in there, and of course insects. And even that little gap here, you can kind of get a sense for how well the FSMP penetrates when I spray. Nothing is coming out. A little bit now. But that just gives you a clue about the penetrating capabilities of this spray. With the straw, you can get all these gaps that the insects want to infiltrate. If we look over here, for the tin roof, we have a nice silicone seal. And it appears to be pretty strong. But I was still tested. 
I would still get some spray in there just to see if there's anything that comes out. Remember, the FSMP is a quick killer and a flushing agent. So if there's anything in these cracks or gaps, they're not going to be happy. They're going to come out. It appears that this area, oh, okay, right here, see this? I found a massive hole. And underneath here, it goes directly to underneath the window. This needs to be sealed. I'm gonna pump. You can't even hear. I mean, I could literally pump this whole can in there. I mean, all kinds of insects can be thriving in there. And if you look hard enough around any one window, you will find this on virtually every house. Once it gets a couple of years old, there's always going to be some settling of the grout, of the mortar, of the caulking. And all that settling leads to little cracks and crevices where insects can thrive. So in this case, we now have this outside area covered. We treated the top really well. We treated the outside frame. We treated what gaps and problematic areas we could find down here. So essentially, we've killed anything that could be down there and we've put in place a strong repellent to keep insects from coming back to that spot. Now people always ask, what's the best time of the year to tree for these pests? And it's always, always in the times when you're A, seeing them, and then before when you're not seeing them. In other words, treating before you get an insect, that is always the best time. When we're talking about windows and we're talking about spring soon to arrive, we want to get these applications done. So in Georgia, we see spring in March, which means February is a great month to do your treatments on the exterior. And if it's a mild winter, you could be late in February. We are experiencing a very mild winter this year. And as a result, we're able to find insects like I found just now. Literally found an ant, just a rogue ant. You know that if it was a colony or something, we would have seen a lot more. The temperatures will clearly allow an ant to be active. But the point is, don't wait till they're inside the house and all over the floor and the walls. Get them at these key entry points while you can before they get inside. That's always a smart approach. Now I'm going to get back inside and show you the finishing touches on the window before we close her up. All right, so I'm back inside and we've gotten the outside treated. We've gotten the inside treated. We have the midsection treated and we essentially only have to close the window. But before we do, we would want to saturate the runners. Just give it a tss, and then at the windowsill, tss, tss, what we call a surface or a spot treatment. So all the cracks and crevices are covered, but this way, when you close the window, you're not vulnerable to what happens so many times when an insect comes to a window and then it turns and is able to get in behind the window where it sits on the runner. If you fail to treat that runner, that can be a major problem, even though the rest of the areas were treated, because that's that would be a gap. That would be a spot that you missed. And in this case, the final treatment should be exactly that. So right down here, and then where the window came down. And if you do this, you're stopping any insects that are released during the winter that are trying to get back in. If it gets cold again and they're trying to come in around the window, they're going to avoid the areas that you just sprayed, but they could find a gap. So don't give them a gap. In closing, I hope that you've learned windows are a complicated set of wood and plastic, all of which have a lot of gaps, cracks, and crevices that insects can take advantage of. And the insects that like to use windows as an entry point are pretty much unlimited. 
it's impossible to stop the flying pests if your windows are open and there's no screens. But the crawling ones, we can definitely intercept. And if you focus your treatment and spot treat and crack and crevice treat, as I've detailed here, you should be able to stop all insects from coming in on any window that you target and treat properly. One last word about these windows. Of course, this is one that goes up. Many customers have windows that they haven't opened or that they can't open. And if you're confronted with that challenge, if you have a window like this and you know that it's a problem, it's gonna be difficult to treat. My best advice there is to do what you can at the key entry points. Because if the window is so tight that you can't lift it, oftentimes they will be between the window and the windowsill and between the window and the runners. So get those areas treated from the inside and then do the same thing on the outside. Unfortunately, treating the inside section is going to be difficult for you because you can't get the window open. But it doesn't mean you can't get them from both sides. And if you do that, you will kill what's inside there. The FSMP is very penetrating, very repellent, and very resilient. So just get it into these gaps and you'll be able to control whatever might be nesting in there. So thanks for watching my how to treat a window for both crawling and flying insects from bugspray.com.